I really think that this is what's happening. Brains evolved, didn't evolve for you to see. They didn't evolve for you to hear. They didn't evolve for you to feel. They evolved to control your body. There's a the scientific term for predictively controlling your body is allostasis. Your brain is making, um, is attempting to, it's attempting to anticipate the needs of your body and meet those needs before they arise so that you can act as you need to act. You know, your brain is running a budget for your body. It's not budgeting money, it's budgeting glucose and salt and water. And instead of having, you know, one or two bank accounts, it has gazillions. There are all these systems in your body that have to be kept in balance. It's making predictions about like, when is it good to spend and when is it good to save and what would be a good investment and am I going to get a return on my investment? They're talking about your brain's predictions about whether or not there will be a deposit or withdrawal. When your brain is running a deficit in your body budget, so you have some kind of metabolic imbalance, you experience that as discomfort. You experience that as distress. When things are chaotic, you can't predict what's going to happen next. So I have this absolutely brilliant scientist working in my lab. His name is um, Jordan uh, Terrio, and he's published this really terrific paper on um, a sense of should. Like, why do we have social rules? Why do we, um, you know, uh, adhere to social norms? It's because if I make myself predictable to you, then you are predictable to me. And if you're predictable to me, that's good because that, that is less metabolically expensive for me. Novelty or unpredictability at the extreme is expensive. And if it goes on for long enough, what happens is, first of all, you will feel really jittery and antsy, which we describe as anxiety. Mm -hmm. It isn't necessarily anxiety. It could be just something is not predictable and you are experiencing arousal because the chemicals that help you learn increase your feeling of arousal, basically. Mm -hmm. But if it goes on for long enough, you will become depleted. So what we have is a culture full of people right now who are, their body budgets are <laughs> just decimated yeah. and there's a tremendous amount of uncertainty. But depression and anxiety are just a way of being in the world when things aren't quite right with your predictions. The brain is uh, maintaining homeostasis. It's actually allostasis. Allostasis, but, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's constantly making predictions and metabolically speaking, it's very costly to make novel, like constantly be learning to making adjustments. And then over time, there's, you know, there's a uh, cost to be paid uh, if you're just, yeah, in, in in a place of chaos where there's constant need for adjusting and, and learning and experience novel things. It's a perfect storm. There isn't a single cause. Right. There are multiple causes, multiple things that combine together. It's a complex, it's a complex system, multiple things. People are, they're, they're metabolically encumbered and they're distressed. In order to try to have empathy for someone who is very much unlike you, you have to forage for information. You, you have to explore information that is novel to you and unexpected, and that's expensive. And at a time when people feel, what do you do when you are running a deficit in your bank account? You stop spending. What does it mean for a brain to stop spending? A brain stops moving very much, stops moving the body, and it stops learning. It just goes with its internal it's model. Brilliantly put, yep. To have empathy for someone who is unlike you yeah. requires learning and practice. You're foraging for information. It's hard for people to have, to be curious about views that are unlike their own when they feel so encumbered. 